Hello, in the last video, I spoke about pain flares and delayed pain response in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Today, I'm speaking about pain trigger tracking to help reduce pain flares and reduce pain. Disclaimer, this is not a one-size-fits-all and the goal is not to eliminate pain entirely. Trigger tracking is one part of a pain management and pain reduction plan. It will not eliminate pain. Let's get into it. By now, I assume you know why it's important to track your pain triggers. Just thinking about it, though, can be pretty overwhelming. What do I track? When do I track? How much detail? Do I have to track? Do I want to track? The last two questions I can't help you with, so I'll uh, try to cover the first three. What do I track? The obvious answer is your pain, but it goes deeper than that. Because with pain trigger tracking, we are uncovering obvious and not so obvious triggers of the pain. A pain journal is essential. Note where you have the pain, the time of the pain, the intensity of the pain, but also your activities. I'll link some apps, journals, and guides I've found in the description below. I haven't used most of them as I typically am kind of lazy and just note uh, instead of using like pre-made journals and apps, but I've heard they've been very helpful for a lot of people, so definitely something I wanted to include at least. And backing up, other than tracking the pain, the activities throughout the day, tracking those is very helpful. So an example of pain journal could be 9 a.m., prepped lunch and made breakfast, 10 a.m., 5-minute light exercise, 11 a.m., hand pain, right hand, all joints, throbbing, sensitive. Noon, cooked lunch and ate. 1 p.m., walked for about 40 minutes. 2 p.m., watched a movie, kind of slouched into the couch a little bit. 3 p.m., hand feeling a little bit better. 4 p.m., hip sublux a couple of times, both hips hurting, throbbing pain, 6 out of 10. 5 p.m., snack, apple. 6 p.m., dinner, had some fast food, wasn't feeling too great. 7, played board games for about two hours. There was lots of sitting in hard chairs and standing. 8 p.m., relaxing bath. 9 p.m., sore hips and legs, bed. And then the next day, you may have a big pain flare because of some of the activities you did were not kind to your body, such as sitting in a hard chair. But overall, this is an example of a simple way that I can see how prepping veggies and hand pain may be connected. I can see that watching a movie and hip subluxations and hip pain may be connected. Some of the apps and journals are actually really visual and that may work better for some people. And they can be really detail oriented. As well as in your writings, you can be more detail oriented, such as pins and needles, pain, 5 out of 10, throbbing, 7 out of 10, etc. Do what's easy to be detailed and consistent with. Pay attention to small changes and regular flares. Me, pain level changes should be noted too. The more detail, the better. Track your mood. It may be a factor or a symptom or both. Another thing that can be seen is, let's see, you have that journal and every Friday you notice you're having like 7 out of 10 pain. Then you can look at what you're doing on a regular basis in the days and hours leading up to that and see if maybe one of those things is a trigger of that 7 out of 10 pain. To sum it up, keep a journal, a day log, track it in an app. Just track activities and events and pain. Eventually you end up with enough information that it's really useful. This is also really useful for when you're seeking care from providers. You have this like data. You can say, this is what I'm going through. This is my pain levels I'm experiencing every day. And some of the apps will help you visualize that. You can visualize it yourself. You can make charts, graphs, etc. But just having that information is a lot more useful than saying, I sometimes have really bad pain. You can say, every single time I cut vegetables, I have really bad hand pain. Um, it's just, it's a lot more useful. For more EDS content, subscribe and check out my EDS playlist. Next video will cover patient self-advocacy and then after that, fatigue and EDS. So stay tuned.